Clash Royale is a game people enjoy in many different ways. Some play on their phones, some on their tablets, the occasional person even on their refrigerator. But what do they play for? For fun, for glory, and occasionally a golden ticket and a chance at being called a world champion. Hello and welcome back to Three Crowns, your home for all your Clash Royale esports news and information. I'm Rich Slayton, joining me as always, my friend Andrew Guy. And rounding out the squad, we have two-time Clash Royale League regional champion Joshua A.C. Sharon. And next to him, the world champion coach of Team Liquid turned JPEG collector Eric EB7 <laughs> Benamu. Uh, Andrew, we're into our third episode here. We've given away two golden tickets, and you and I, along with our guys, have a lot of ground to cover today. That's right. We got a brand new golden ticket event coming your guys' way, but we're also in the midst of giving away our third golden ticket. The ESL Snapdragon Pro Series is still well on its way. More on that later. We're going to be giving our favorite Dark Horse picks and just the favorites for who we think is going to get a golden ticket and be at World Finals later on today. But first... Queso Cup Golden Edition, absolutely a barn burner. Talking about Mohamed Light, the best player in the world, going up against Ta here, a, a former monthly finalist. And it looks like Mo's got this locked up. Two Lava Hounds in the pocket, a flying machine behind. But look at that. Ta does a sellout push. Golden Knight plus a barrel. Mo Light goes, no problem. I got it locked up with a Goblin Cage. You can see him looking at the camera. What on earth happened? Even the best in the world can miss interactions sometimes. And I've never seen Mo Light look so sad. We had two of our players be the top seeds coming into this weekend one was mo one was wallace but wallace got set down to the elimination bracket and he's gonna play up against faust right should be okay wallace has way more experience but as you can see right here faust kept up the pressure kept up the heat he takes game number one and in an elimination game he steals it with that last second fireball poison is ticking away but not gonna be fast enough for wallace he is still in the running for another golden ticket let's go back to mo against a soft mo a soft and moogie looked perfect on day number one and as you can see right here a soft is still looking great through this series it is game number one muhammad light only 200 hp remaining but look at that a brilliant minor catch in front of the tower with the hunter and the hunter is in the best spot it can be in to stop that balloon right well kind of wrong as the royal giants in the pocket to take that tower earthquake ensues that nuclear bomb from the balloon takes another tower from mo and once again he's left going what on earth is happening so let's go over to someone else you might know and someone else that mo knows moogie our defending world champion going up against arden toas right who is this guy well if you've been watching the scene closely you probably know who he is and you're going to know more about him as the year goes on as you can see right here look at the crowns on the right side of the screen look at those tower hps Look at the spell power that we got. Arden Toas, 2-0 Mugi, our former world defending champion. And he is set now to the elimination bracket. So what was it about? Arden Toas and Mo. You saw him in the upper bracket semis, and now you're seeing him right here in the grand finals. A beautiful run for Arden, but you can see him waving the white flag right there to the Prince of Egypt, the golden chair, golden boy, the best player in Clash Royale right now with... Well, you know, 30,000 more dollars in his pocket, a golden ticket and an opportunity to win another one. If he didn't win one today or that day, whoo, it's all about Muhammad Light here in 2022. He's going to be at our world finals. Samuel Basoto, Mo Light, our first two golden ticket holders. But who's going to be the third? And could it be you? How could you get there? Rich, fill us in. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Yep, there's a lot more coming your way in Clash Royale competitive golden ticket opportunities, opportunities to win prize minutes. Go ahead, check out some of those events coming your way right now. First up, we have a new golden ticket event starting very soon, the Masters Challenge by Bernard Chong, a trip to World Finals, and $50,000 available for that one. Open qualifiers begin May 16th through May 22nd. There will be 48 separate in-game tournaments hosted by content creators creators lots of chances for you to qualify also ongoing we're moving from split one into split two of the snapdragon pro series for europe middle east and north africa that other golden ticket and sixty thousand dollars available for that one open qualifiers begin may 
20th and run through June 5th. Make sure you get in on the action for that one as well. And then if you are not in Europe, Middle East, North Africa, split number two for the NA $20,000 event is starting right now. $20,000 qualifiers begin on May 17th. Go to esports.clashroyale.com for more information on that one. Speaking of that Snapdragon Pro Series, split number one is moving into its final stage. Europe, Middle East, and North Africa produced an amazing collection of finalists competing for that golden ticket and that big prize pool. Mohamed Light already has a golden ticket but might get more money. Michifu, Viper, Legolas, huge names here. And of course, look at the German contingent as well. OP Sam, Schwarzen, Morton, Jonah. A lot of good Clash Royale players there in Germany. You can go ahead and check out that action later this month. Keep an eye on all your channels for information on that one. And of course, North America just had its finals for split number one, an absolutely stacked event. Mini Minter, Betfis, Ian, Boss, Hasiel, the return of Diego B, former world champion with Team Liquid. But this one was all about Arden Toas, the young man out of Mexico. Absolutely stunning at the end of last year, and this year has been no different. He was brilliant this competition. Check out this snowball prediction on the skeletons. Gets that connection with the Dark Prince. His cycle play, his micro has been brilliant so far this year. We expect a lot of great things from the young man. A great competition, but of course, split two on its way very soon. For more information on that, go to snapdragonproseries.com. You can get in on the action and of course, follow the action there as well. Speaking of the action, we've given away two golden tickets so far. One to Saba Basoto, one to Mohamed Light, but there are more golden tickets available. Let's bring the whole team back on here and talk about this for just a minute. Guys, we have a lot more golden tickets to go. There are going to be 16 total world finalists, but that early golden ticket takes so much stress off the board. So let's talk favorites. Let's talk dark horses. First, let's go ahead and get your favorite picks. Who do you think is almost a lock? I know it's Clash Royale. There's no locks, but who are your top picks for that golden ticket? Uh, Eric, we'll start with you. Who is just waiting for Clash Royale to give them the golden ticket that they already believe is theirs? Well, I believe there's one person missing from the trio of people that have qualified so far. You have Basoto, you have Mo, and you're only missing the one person from that close group of friends in Lucas. And we all know he only needs one good month to make it because when he's on his game, he can, you know, really beat anyone. And now that Basoto and Mo are locked in, I think they're going to help him as friends and he'll be able to come out with the golden ticket. That's a, a really powerful pick there. Uh, Andrew, do you concur? Is Lucas just waiting for his golden ticket or is someone else your favorite to get the next one? A hundred percent. I mean, Lucas is kind of the, uh, it feels like the no-brain pick. He's so good. We've seen him be so consistent for so long. We almost saw him take it in our first golden ticket giveaway, but I'm going to also go to another person that feels like they're going to be there no matter what. The goaded one in Morton, one of the best players to ever play the game, the best player out of Germany. I love him. He's consistent. He's maybe not quite at the top of his game right now. He's maybe keeping up with those guys that are maybe S plus tier, but I still think Morton's S tier. I still think we'll see him at world finals. And as you can see, he's still in the running in ESL. Morton, a pretty brave pick there. Um, I mean, I don't know. That's such a hard one to talk about, right? He's one of the all-time greats, but has not been, as you said, the the the, the best of Morton we've seen as of late. Yeah. Um, Josh, before we jump into your pick, uh, I think Morton will be at World Finals. Do you think he gets there by a golden ticket, or do you think he gets there through the Summer Series? Uh, I think it's more likely that it goes through the Summer Series. I think he's very talented. I think he can win one of these competitions. But he's just struggled. Uh, you know, he hasn't like super impressed me in any of the competitions. I wouldn't be shocked entirely. Uh, but yeah, I'd say it's a lot more likely that it comes through the uh, the summer split. Okay, so who's going to be your lock pick? Who are you jumping on the Lucas train, or where are you going for your pick to see who gets that next golden ticket or gets one of those remaining golden tickets? I think it has to be Wallace. Uh, I was so impressed by his gameplay this past tournament. I mean, just, I, I you know, tears were falling from my eyes because I was witnessing <laughs> greatness. Uh, he, he is so talented. I can't wait to see what he does in the upcoming tournaments. I, I think I, you know, I'm, I'm not hearing a lot of conviction. I'm hearing kind of like, you know, this is my guy <laughs> because for me, I guarantee he gets, you know, one of these competitions in the next three competitions as well. Okay, so Put three total blast. Picks. Yeah, yeah, I mean, right. I, I picked Wallace all last year, so you can do it this year. You know, let me let, let me know how it goes. 
You know, I'm going to go ahead and join you, Eric, and I'm going to say I think that Lucas, right? I mean, you made a great point there that there are – you talk about the best in the world for some reason. You know, if you don't have one great tournament, everyone forgets that you're a top-tier S-tier pro. Lucas was the only one challenging Mo for that top spot during the year last year, the only one to win two open qualifiers or two monthly qualifiers. So I'm going to join you on that Lucas train. So we have two for Lucas, one for Morton, and one for Wallace. Now let's go over to the Dark Horse side, the side of players – where you go, hmm, maybe this person, you know what, I always go last, I'll go first this time. I'm going to pick Asaf, the drill player out of Israel. Ah. Asaf looked so good <laughs> during the KSU Cup Golden Edition. He's been right there, and I, I think that there's something about, not only is he really good, but he's hungry, right? He missed out on number one on ladder because of Mohammed Light. He missed out on the on that golden ticket in part because of Mohammed Light. Asaf is hungry, and I don't know what his overall support staff system is right now. So if he can get the support staff together and really make a couple tiny adjustments, I think that he's a really good shot at my pick for a dark horse for golden ticket. If not that way, then I think definitely into world finals overall. Andrew, I saw you kind of uh, uh, grimace yeah. there. Did I just steal your pick? You totally stole my pick, man. I loved watching a soft play. I love his play style. I love his deck choice. I love his composure. And, and it just feels like he's a very mature Clash Royale player uh, for how little we've seen him at CRL. He's been an up and coming name for a while and he did not disappoint at Queso Cup Golden Edition. He is definitely my dark horse pick. And honestly, Arden Toas is another great pick, but he doesn't really even feel like a dark horse at this point, walking away with 15K and staying in that upper bracket for the entire tournament. I mean, he basically only lost to Mohammed Light which is the person that sent Asaf down. So since you stole Asaf, I'll say Arden, but I, my heart is with Asaf. You know what? We'll probably throw Asaf into your, into your graphic. Who knows? We'll figure out uh, which one we'll throw up there for you. Uh, Josh, are you on the Asaf train? Do you have someone else that you're bringing in? Is Arden your guy? Who do you got for a Dark Horse pick? You know, I got to bring someone else in. Uh, he finished top three on ladder last season. Uh, Eric knows him pretty well. It's Igor. Um, anytime Igor <laughs> Lapakati have any sort of recent success, my heart just wants to root for them. And he's had that recent success. I, I would not be shocked to see Igor, you know, start to explode in the tournament scene this year. Uh, and, you know, I could see him doing really well really soon. I, you know, it's, it's so interesting to think of Igor as a dark horse pick, but it certainly feels that <laughs> way. And as you might have seen in the Snapdragon Pro Series, Legolas, part of that crew of Igor Lapakati, Legolas, and Dreaming Fly in the mix there for that European Middle East North Africa stream uh, Snapdragon Pro Series golden ticket. Eric, you're the last one here. It, yeah. we've, we've got we've got, two, we got one and a half picks so far for Asaf, <laughs> a half a pick for Arden Toas, and then your former player, the guy who um, had the best debut in World Finals history, I guess, Igor. Where are you going? I mean, you know, you took Andrew's pick in Asaf, but Andrew completely ruined mine because my dark horse was actually Morden and he picked him as, you know, like a favorite. So I don't think I can go that route anymore. So I'm going to go with Ian. I think Ian has been super consistent since last year. And what really impresses me about him is his mechanics. So all I think he needs to do is get a little bit better with the preparation. I see him rushing a little bit when it comes to deck choices, not being too sure here and there. So if he can just get that preparation on point, his mechanics will take him there. Well, uh, a lot of Clash Royale left to be played, of course, multiple golden tickets on the line. You can find all that, of course, right here. And, of course, we'll be back in the summertime. Man, that summer series is going to be fascinating when we see who else is trying to qualify yeah. for those remaining spots. Uh, Eric, Josh, fun hanging out with you guys, as always. Loved hearing your picks. And we'll see you guys, of course, next episode. Andrew, we're wrapping up the day today. We've had some really interesting stuff. New golden tickets on the line. Uh, a golden ticket for, uh, you know, the Prince of Egypt. Now we have to call him the Pharaoh, I guess. It looks like <laughs> yeah. we're going into a pretty hot summer for CR. Yeah, I mean, you know, you talk about these two guys that already have golden tickets. It's making everyone else that hungry, and it's also thinning out that competition just a little bit. And then you know so many more golden tickets are going to be given away in that summer series. It's just going to be absolutely insane, and we're going to be there every step of the way here on Three Crowns. I can't wait, man. So where you want? To, where do people go to find the rest of their information for both Clash Royale League and beyond? Well, the best place to do it is Esports Royale, E-N on Twitter, if you're an English speaker, right here on Three Crowns. We do this twice a month, and we give you all the up-to-date information in one tight little package so that you guys can digest all of it and then know exactly where we are in the competitive scene. And of course, check out the website, esports.clashroyale.com. Those are all the best ways, and I'm going to say it because I've been saying it for five years. 
ring that bell. Turn on notifications so you don't ever miss when we go live or when an event goes live. That's it for today's episode. Lots of ways that you can get involved in Clash Royale Esports as a player and spectator. That's right, player, you can be involved. So go ahead, jump on that action. On behalf of everybody here, Joshua AC, Sharon, Eric, EB7, Benamu, and my buddy over there, Andrew Guy, I'm Rich Slayton. We'll see you back here next time on Three Crowns.